Welcome to Grateful, where we provide online SAT and ACT tutoring to students all around the world. Your competition is using a tutor for the SAT or ACT. Don't put yourself at a disadvantage. If you're interested in finding out how we can help you get ready for your SAT or ACT, regardless of where in the world you live, we help people all around the world, feel free to reach out. Right now, we're looking at the March 2021 non-calculator math section, section 3 of the SAT. Let's go ahead and get started. Here, we're just being asked to show that we can graph a function. So essentially, we have y equals negative 1 fourth x minus 2, and that's because an f of x expression is the same thing as y. So f of x really means y, or even h of x or g of x. So this function they're giving us is in a y equals mx plus b format, where the slope is negative 1 fourth, and the y-intercept is negative 2. So we can start by getting rid of the answers that don't have y-intercepts of negative 2. That includes answer choice A, because the y-intercept is hitting the y-axis at positive 2. And same thing with B, that's also hitting the y-axis at positive 2. C and D are both hitting the y-axis at negative 2, so that's a good thing. Now we're just looking for the one that has a slope of negative 1 over 4. So that means that the slope which is your rise over run is negative 1 over 4. So it's going down 1. It's not rising, it's going down as it's running to the right by 4. So which of these does that? If we look at C, that one's going down 1, 2, 3, 4 and going over by 1. So that's wrong. But D is going down 1 and over 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's answer choice D for number 1. Going over to number two now, we're being asked for the positive solution. So let's see what that means. Just getting x by itself, we can take away 10 from both sides. That gives us x squared is 81. Taking the square root of both sides, square root of this, square root of that, that's x equals plus or minus 9. Remember, when you take a square root, there's a positive and a negative side. That's why they're telling us to get the positive solution. So it's plus or minus 9, and the positive one is plus 9. So that's a for number two. Now we're going over to number 3, and we can just start by simplifying this a little bit. x plus 7 equals 3x minus 9, so 3 times x and 3 times negative 3. Now we can take away x from both sides, and 7 equals 2x minus 9. And now add 9 to both sides, and so we'll have 16 equals 2x, divide by 2, and we'll have x equals 8, which is b for number 3. For number 4, we're being given the slope of 1 and the y-intercept, too. Now, how do we know this is a y-intercept? Because for the y-intercept, that means that x is 0. And also, the x-intercept is the place where y equals 0. So we're being given a slope and a y-intercept, so we can use slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, put in the slope of 1 and the y-intercept of 2, and that's y equals 1x plus 2, which is answer choice C for number 4. Question number 5 is a really interesting example of the kinds of things the SAT does in order to manufacture difficulty. It's a really easy question, but with all of the words in other languages, we're just encountering a lot of weirdness and strangeness to the problem that could cause a lot of people to get it wrong. But the way to keep it together on these is to use the units for everything you're talking about. So we have Fenigs. And the question is telling us that we have P of them. And we have Groschen. Any Germans out there can correct me on the spellings of these. But we have G of those. So we'll just make a little room here and say we have P Fenigs and G Groschen. So let's make a little more space. This all in the end has to add up to 85 Phoenix. So the active part of this is that the Groschen are worth 10 Phoenix each. So let's go ahead and put that in here. So just rewriting this. And for the G Groschen, we're going to put a unit conversion that says that one Groschen is worth 10 Fenigs. I could only imagine what it felt like for students taking this in March 2021 in a live SAT. Uh, but in any case, 
the quotient are going to cancel, one on the top, one on the bottom. By the way, this entire thing here is equal to the number 1. This is the chemistry style of unit conversion where we're multiplying by something equal to the number 1 because the numerator and denominator are equal to each other. So we're really not changing the g groschen. We're just changing the appearance of it. But this unit cancels with this unit, leaving us with the correct unit. So now the thing to notice is that we have the same unit all throughout. And once you have the same unit, you don't really need the units anymore. So P plus 10G equals 85. And that's answer choice B for number five. Number six is really just about common denominators. We have one over X plus one over two X, and we need the same denominators to be able to proceed. So let's just go ahead and multiply this one by two over two. So this will give us the common denominator. So we'll have 2 plus 1 all over 2x and add the numerator and we get 3 over 2x, which is answer choice C for number 6. Question number 7 is going to give us some practice on completing the square in order to find the equation of a circle. It's a common operation that comes up from time to time on the SAT. So you'll see why we're explaining this in a moment, but to complete the square, you need to know B b over 2 and b over 2 squared. And you need to know that b over 2 squared is what you add to both sides, and b over 2 will be what it factors to. Now what b are we talking about here? We're talking about the b of a quadratic, because a quadratic can be in the format of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're talking about the number that's in front of the x, or if we're in terms of y, the number that's in terms of the y. We're talking about this negative 10 and this 6. So let's just go ahead and bring them over. Negative 10 and 6. This is for the x. This is for the y. Divide them both by 2 and square them both. And we have these numbers that we're going to use to complete the square. And so here we have the numbers that we're going to use to complete the square. So what we need to do is just go ahead and add the 25 right here for the x's and the 9 right here for the y's. Now we added 25 and 9, which is 34 to the left, so we can add 34 to the right, and so that's 36. And here, this is x squared minus 10x plus 25. That'll give us x minus 5, all squared. And here, we have y squared plus 6y plus 9. That'll give us y plus 3, all squared. And this is in the equation of a circle, which is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And so we know that the h, the x value of the center, is 5. And the k, the y value of the center, is negative 3. Why the opposite signs? Because whenever you have a formula that has negatives in the formula, it reverses everything. So let's just say that we took that center of 5 negative 3 and plugged it back in. It would be x minus 5, so a positive 5 would look negative, and y minus negative 3. And so a negative 3 is going to look positive when you plug it in. And so the center is 5, negative 3, and that's c for number 7. Okay, now going over to question 8, we're being given a system of linear inequalities. So let's just imagine what this looks like graphically. So here we have an xy axis that goes four in every direction. And in order to understand these, we have to understand the lines that are related to them. So this would be comparable to the line y equals 4x, and not just y equals 4x, but y equals 4x plus 0. So in an mx plus b format, we know that the y-intercept is 0, and the slope is 4, which means it's the same as 4 over 1, and that's our rise over run. So it goes up 4 and over 1. And so we can put our next point right there, and that's where our line's going to be. It'll look something like that. And the inequality is not y equals 4x, but instead y is greater than 4x. So that means that for this line that we just drew, we're going to shade above it. So we'll shade above this line. So now we've shaded above the line, and looking at the other one, that could be compared to y equals negative x and also negative x plus 0. So now here, your y-intercept, of course, is 0, but your slope is the number in front of the x, which is actually negative 1. 
and negative 1 is really negative 1 over 1 because any number is itself over 1. So you're starting at 0 and you're going down 1 over 1 and the next point would be here and if you keep going down 1 over 1 it starts to look like that. So that's our second line and that one is not y equals negative x but it's y is less than negative x. So for that line we just drew we need to shade below it. And now we shaded below the line and you can see which area was double shaded. It's the one that has that kind of combination color. It's like this area right here. So let's go ahead and plot the points here. We have 1 comma 1, negative 2 comma negative 2, 3 comma negative 3, which seems like it might be in that area, and negative 4, positive 4, which is like right around here. So there are a couple of points that are kind of borderline, and there's an easy way to make sense of this. On an xy axis in general, there's a very special line, y equals x. That's the inverse line. By the way, on a separate note, the inverse of a function is the reflection of that function across this red line, the line y equals x, also known as the inverse line. But everywhere on that line, the y value is equal to the x value. So I could say it goes through 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, all, you know, 5 comma 5. The x value is always equal to the y value. And what we have for this line right here, y equals negative x, that's the same thing, but it's got the negative. So we're going to have values that look like this and this on that line. So we had negative 4, positive 4, and the numbers themselves were equal. That puts it right here. And for the 3s, we have positive 3, negative 3. And that actually tells me that the number should have been more on the line itself because we have the same number both times. So those two are right on the line, so they cannot be the answer. And then we've got this point right here, which was negative 2, negative 2, and it's a little more clearly in the double shaded area. So the answer for number 8 is going to be B. Question number 9 looks to be a question on translating slopes. So they're giving us an H equals 150 plus 10T. I'm just going to rewrite that here as h equals 10t plus 150. Now what I did is I put it into a y equals mx plus b format, which is more standard and easier to work with in my opinion. But the point is that the slope is your rise over run, which is your change in y over change in x. But the idea of translating the slope is the idea that we're going to put in the details of this problem. The housing units is the y so the housing units is y. So this is the change in housing units. And the x is t. And that's the number of months. So in my own words, I would say the slope is the change in housing units per month. And what a coincidence, the question is asking us how many housing units are added to the community each month. So we just confirmed that what they were doing here was finding a fancy way to ask us what the slope is. And the slope is 10, so the answer for number 9 is A. On question 10, the first thing we're going to want to do is distribute this negative sign. That negative sign is like a negative 1. So we have 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 minus 5x squared plus x plus 7. So let's combine our like terms. Here we have 2x squared and negative 5x squared. So that's negative 3x squared. Here we have 3x and x, so that's 4x, and last but not least, we have negative 2 and 7, which is 5, and that's negative 3x squared plus 4x plus 5, which is answer choice D for number 10. 